So, this is where we were last time and we want to prove this theorem. Okay, so, let us see how do we do this. What I will do is look at that line which I just defined and So, what I am going to do is to take define two domains, they are both rectangles, they are the common part of this rectangle is this vertical line at C and going up to plus r up there minus r down there and this extending on the this particular domain is a rectangle extending up to plus u here and this domain d 1 is going up to minus u. Okay. And uh, the reason I am defining two domains is because uh, I want to show a certain behavior of the, this function which is very different depending on the value of x. So, below 1 it is one behavior above 1 is another completely different behavior. So, let us see. So, if you recall the integral that we are looking for is x to the s by s d s right. So, let us first integrate it over or around the boundary of d 1. What is this? This should be easy the integral. Zero why in d 1 this is 0 not analytic at uh, s equals 0, it has a pole at s equals 0. In fact, this is the only pole for this right, there is no other pole. So, inside and 0 is inside d 1, so that is a pole at d 1. What is the residue at uh, this pole? You multiply it this function x to the s divide by s by s and take the limit as s goes to 0, a residue is 1. So, therefore, this is this integral is 2 pi i fine. So, that is what we know directly from the uh, residue theorem. Now, we can now split this integral as before into because it is over a rectangle. So, we will split it into four parts. The first part goes from C minus I r to C plus I r the second part goes from minus u plus i r c plus i r. So, I am traversing the domain in counterclockwise fashion right c plus i r to minus u plus i r plus minus u plus i r to minus u minus i r and finally, minus u minus i r to c minus i r. Okay. Let us call this i 2, i 3, i 4 and the strategy will be same as before. This is the integral of interest that we want to show something for and so we want to get rid of the remaining ones. So, let us try to do that and the same apply the same strategy. Let us look at the absolute value of these integrals. So, what is the absolute value of i 2? That is the absolute value of this integral c plus i r to minus u plus i r 
x to the s by s d s. This is less than equal to integral of absolute value. What is absolute value of s as s goes from c plus i r to minus u plus i r. So, s is going from here to here what is the absolute value of s it varies surely, but it is at least r and that is all we need because we are dividing by absolute value of s so is at least r. So, this is at least and what about x to the s x to the s is e to the okay let's me write e to the s log x ds c plus i r to minus u plus i r and note here that although s is a complex number the only part that varies in x s is the real one so i can rewrite the same integral as uh, by the way this is taking the absolute value so s i can write as uh, real part plus the complex part when you take the absolute value the complex part anyway goes away because that's absolute value is one so only thing i left with here is 1 over r c to minus u e to the t log x dt and okay there should be somewhere outside i should just put absolute value I do not want any negative values anyway okay. and this can be integrated easily. What is the integral of this e to the t log x d t e to the t log x divided by log x going from c to minus u and this is less than equal to well the bigger part would be when t equals c that is x to the c by log x minus x to the minus u by log x. In fact, let us put a plus also it does not matter just to be on the same side. So, that is the estimation for I 2 and if you look at uh, this one I 4 it is the same thing it was the integral going up and there is the same along the same line just reflecting down in the imaginary side on the around the real axis. So, it is the same the absolute value wise it would be the same. So, you can write bound this also that leaves I 3. So, let us do the same exercise for I 3 that is from minus u plus i r to minus u minus i r. What is the absolute value of s? So, here it is at least u. So, we can just use that at least u the absolute value d s and now again s breaks into real and imaginary part when you take the absolute value the imaginary part vanishes. What about the real part? How big is the real part? It is exactly minus u and so this is less than equal to 1 by u minus u plus i r to this becomes x to the minus u d s 
So, there is really no integral to be done, I mean, this is a trivial integral and therefore, th and this integral is at most of length 2 r right. So, in fact, when you take the absolute value, yeah, that becomes at most 2 r. So, that you get basically 2 r x to the minus u divided by. So, plus this 2 times this plus this. So, that is equal to I should stick an order here. Is that right? Plus x to the minus u log x. Now, let us take the limits and the first thing we do is we send u to infinity. This is of course, 2 pi i and as you send u to infinity, what do you get? Because u does not occur in on in the here and anyway. So, I can easily send u to infinity, what comes or what remains in the error term. Two of course, I can hide in the constant, this goes to infinity, this goes to infinity. And now, if we if I send r to oh wait a minute I should very 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 I should be careful. So, when I send u to infinity what happens? This will happen only if x was greater than 1. So, this is a very important clause to be remembered. as long as x is greater than 1, this is what happens. If x is was less than 1, then uh, this will go to infinity, so that will be pointless. Okay. So, assuming x is greater than 1, I get this uh, approximation and now send r to infinity. Right. So, that is the result of integrating on this domain. Now, let us look at the result of integrating on T 2, it will be pretty much similar. First of all, by residue theorem, what is the residue? It's zero. It's completely analytic on this domain. So this is zero. You see, that's the reason we chose these two domains. Here, because of the pole being here, we get a residue which is two pi i, or divide by two pi i, you get one. Here, it's completely analytic, so it goes to zero. But also, the important thing is it to sort of coincide this zero one with the value of x what I did was to look at this specific integral. So, this says that the integral does converge, but only when x is greater than 1. Now, let us look at these, this one and uh, same way we will express this as sum of 4 integrals.
again we let this to be I 2, I 3 and I 4. I 2 and I 4 are again similar integrals in absolute value. So, their absolute value is going to be less than again using the same ideas x to the s is e to the s log x and now absolute value for s is going to be how much at least r is going from far away right. And of course, an absolute value here. Again, the imaginary part vanishes, and then we can this we can convert to a real integral, which goes from c to u, e to the t log x. One by r comes out here, t t, and this is less than equal to. x to the u by log x plus x to the c by log x fine and same with actually i4 the absolute value i4 also has the same property and what about i3 i3 is u plus ir to u minus ir Well, s is going to be absolute value of s is at least u and absolute value of x to the s is going to be x bar u ds and this again is 2 by 2 r by u x to the Now, send u to infinity, what happens? What happens to the first term? Well, depending on x, if x is less than 1, this goes to 0, if x is bigger than 1, this diverges. Okay. So, we focus on x less than 1 and we get that this is equal to same thing with the second term. In fact, this is the absolute value of x must be. Okay. And now, if you send r to infinity, we get what do you get? This is 0, there is something missing this is 1 by r on the outside for i 2 and i 4. So, this also goes to infinity. And this gives me therefore, the function that we want slightly changed, because this is a when x is between 0 and 1 this is 0 and then it steps up and then stays at 1 forever. What we wanted was 1 between 0 and 1 then step down, but that is trivial to change. So, it plays x by 1 by x and you get the other function. 
okay so this is going to be it's a very interesting function to begin with and it's going to be very useful for us later on also it demonstrates the power of this contour integrals that you can use the knowledge about the poles inside a contour to actually evaluate the integral very easily at x equal to 1 yeah the x equal to 1 this what okay let's see what happens if x equal to 1 at x equal to 1 you get ds by s right ds by s is log s log s integrated from c minus i r to c plus i r what is that well can that is uh, see firstly it we have to think about what um, what is the interpretation of log s we are taking we have already discussed it a lot. The nice thing about here is that because the line is on the positive side it is not cutting any of those funny things on the left hand side. So, it is only on the one single sheet and it is going from c minus i r to c plus i r and so we can just use the prince the main value of our log s which is um, so log of c plus i r minus log of c minus i r and then that becomes log of c plus i r divided by log c minus i r and as you send r to infinity what do you get you get i divided by minus i and minus 1. So, you get log of minus 1. What is log of minus 1? i per log of minus 1 is i pi that does not sound right. No, that is right that is about right. Okay, so, so this is let me just say exercise. that and therefore one over two pi i C minus i infinity to c plus i infinity x to the s by s d s this equals 0 if x is between 0 and 1 half if x equals 1 1 if x greater than 1. So, this is the step function for us any questions good. So, I am pretty much done with introduction to complex analysis and now I would like to start on the real content of the course. Now, in this we have 15 minutes. So, I would like to start it from the next class. So, to fill up the time let us let us do one more integral. this time let us do something different. Um, let me see. Now, who can integrate this do you know this integral classically how do you solve this. Hmm? Define a as sin alpha that will require a to be between minus 1 to plus 1. 1 upon a as sin alpha. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then do something with it. Okay, then you can sin alpha, uh, suppose it is sin alpha plus sin theta. And 
and do some calculation. So, that is one way of doing it good. somewhat messy. So, here is a much simpler way of doing it same strategy think of this integral as happening over complex plane. So, trans firstly I want to translate everything over the complex numbers. So, here theta is varying 0 to 2 pi Okay, let us imagine that we are integrate there is a we are integrating over complex plane same theta 0 to 2 pi, but now instead of theta we can actually view it as a all the points we are integrating over are complex numbers right. So, let us write this as first let us do the substitution. So, let z be e to the i theta okay, which is therefore, cos theta plus i sin theta. So, what is sin theta in terms of z what z is equal to the power simpler z bar no you do not want to get z bar z bar is by the way, did I talk about this? That the function z f z equals z bar is it analytic or not? We haven't. Okay, is it analytic? F z equals z bar. How do you prove it to be analytic? Cauchy Riemann. Okay, do Cauchy Riemann. Sure. So continuities are assumed. That's simple. Does it satisfy Cauchy Riemann? It does. Okay, let's pull out an intermediate page. Or I can write f of x plus i y equals x minus i y. So, what is Cauchy Riemann? This is u. This is minus y is v. So, del u by del x is del v by del y <coughs> minus fails del u by del x must be equal to del v by del y. So, not analytic so this function is not analytic. So, which means that we cannot use z bar anywhere in an analytic function essentially. So, coming back to this z bar is no good, but that idea is good that you want to get cos theta minus i sin theta somewhere. So, that you can subtract and get just sin theta. How do you get cos theta minus i theta minus i sin theta? without using z bar. E to power e to power minus i theta exactly. So, which is so e to the minus i theta is cos theta minus i sin theta which is very good, but what is e to the minus i theta in terms of z is 1 by z that is very fine. So, now you subtract and so we get sin theta is therefore, 1 over 2 i z minus 1 by z. So, we are choosing that we are choosing z to be e to the i theta making sure that mod z is 1, because we are integrating over this circle and can choose any radius of the circle with 1 radius 1 is the best for us good. So, that is sin theta and what is d z is i e to the i theta d theta which means i z d theta. So, now we got everything to do the substitution and I can write
d theta is d z by i z. and sin theta is 1 over 2 i z minus 1 over z. Okay. And this is equal to d z over a i z plus 1 over 2 z square minus 1 over 2. Okay. So, that is what the integral looks like and this is over a circle of radius 1. So, what the value what is the value of this integral? Well, it depends on whether there is a pole inside the unit disk or not. So, and that is easy to determine, it is a quadratic in z. So, what are the two roots of z? They are uh, minus 2 a i plus minus square root of minus 4 a square plus 4 right divide by 2 and therefore you get minus a i plus minus 1 minus a i square so where are these roots first of all it's a uh, real and imaginary part are very clear real is either plus or minus square root of 1 minus a square and imaginary part is minus a i. It depends on a yes absolutely it does depend on a. So, what happens if a is greater than 1 then there is no pole inside and then the integral would be 0 and what happens if the a is between minus 1 and plus 1 then it will have will have to have both the roots in yeah it will have both the roots inside uh, wait is that necessary this square plus this square is 1 okay so a greater than 1 is probably is not even doesn't even make sense i mean this this process will fail if actually a is bigger than 1 because then you uh, or will it if e is greater than 1 then this actually becomes complex which is uh, which just makes things messier than before No, that's then. It's not necessary that it will be outside. If a is bigger than one, then this would be i times something, i times a real number, right? So then you get either add or subtract that real number to a. So you might get inside or outside the circle. In fact, if A is large, one of them will certainly be inside the circle, because that real number would be very close to A, square root of A square minus 1, 
phase large that is going to be very close to A. So, when you both get added that falls out if they once get subtracted from the other that would be inside. And if A is uh, between minus 1 and plus 1 then this is both are inside right okay, good. So, we split this in therefore, two. So, let us analyze the first uh, if minus 1 is less than a is less than 1 then what happens. So, then the integral would be what what is that ok let us write this instead of first doing it let us factor this. This is a factorization and therefore, this is equal to at this the residue is one is. So, basically eliminate this and substitute for z minus a i minus square root of a square which will be 1 by 2 minus 2 square root of 1 minus a square plus when you substitute this what is going to be the residue is this correct and this is 0 this cancels with this ok. And if a is bigger than one, then going back, one of them is the residue. So when this is plus, that's the only residue that survives. So, the one that survives is this one that is the pole inside and though you make this substitution and then you get minus 1 over which is of course, wrong. Why is this wrong? Yeah, it should be a real number this is a complex number. Oh, 1 minus a square is complex ok ok got excellent. So, this is basically 2 pi by square root of a square minus 1 ok. Should not there be a minus now there is a minus already here and this when you take this oh there should minus 1 square root is i which gets cancelled. So, there should be a minus well it could have been a plus 1 or minus 1 depending on whether square root of minus 1 you choose to be plus i or minus i probably is minus 1 i actually this this one has to look at and see what what is the right value maybe going back to the original integral hmm? why a is greater than 1 that is right and sin theta varies between minus 1 and 1. So, everything is positive. So, this must be positive. So, this should be positive. Good. So, there you are that is the solution of your integral. 
done in a very straightforward way, no clever substitution needed, just apply the blindly the residue theorem and you have the result. Okay. And not even well of course, this is just now that we are playing around, let me just state another sort of obvious thing also that if this A was a complex number instead of a real number greater than 1, a complex number with absolute value greater than 1, then what would happen. So, this is an analytic function of A right, it does not have there is no pole in because the absolute value of A is greater than 1. So, there is no pole of this and we saw that one of the theorem we proved was that in if there is an analytic function it is integral is also analytic right. So, this is an analytic function in A which on the real line positive real line A greater than 1 agrees with this. Therefore, it must agree it with it over the entire complex that half plane absolute value A greater than 1. So, you get that result for free. Of course, this is also analytic for absolute value A greater than 1. So, it both are analytic both agree on line and therefore, they are they agree everywhere. Okay, so, that is it for today.